This is Matthew Milam, and this is the Milam Report, brought to you by Real Ones Gaming. This week's report starts off with the revelation that Konami had a point-and-click edition of Batman Returns for the PC. Those of you who don't know, Batman Returns was the second film in the Tim Burton version of the Batman film trilogy. Shortly after Tim Burton's second movie, he left the franchise, and we can't talk about those other films after that. Up until Telltale Games did their version of a point-and-click adventure to, I don't know what result because I don't play Telltale Games, Konami apparently did it first, and your job was to collect evidence to basically take down the Penguin. Now, point-and-click games are a different engine altogether. Mostly, you just have your mouse as the controller. The object is to observe whatever room your character's in, click on objects that look like they're clickable, and either it's an item that helps you defeat a bad guy or it takes you to the next story point. This was certainly a different video game adaptation of Batman Returns than the others that everyone else played, which was just you as Batman kicking the crap out of clowns and other odd bad guys. You know, typical Batman. Let's talk about DPI. You excited? So DPI stands for dots per inch, which measures how many pixels your cursor, your mouse cursor, moves on your screen in relation to your mouse on your desk. A high amount of DPI means that small movements will move the cursor quickly. Low DPI means that the mouse will travel further in order to cover the same distance on screen. And why this applies to gamers is this. The higher the DPI, the more likely your movements will be a little jerky, you won't be able to really aim at targets if you're playing games like Call of Duty, and most likely your stealth game will suck. I mean, come on, you can't really be stealthy if you're always jerking around and you can't see what the hell you're doing. So yeah, lower that DPI, get your game on. Hard disk drives versus solid state drives. It's kind of like the difference between having a whole bunch of ramen to eat for the rest of your life because you're broke, and being able to play those Steam games that you haven't played since they went on sale five years ago. SSD, it's a little faster. HDD, not really that fast, but you get more bang for your buck in terms of storage. Now, for those of you with an endless bank account and you just can't deal with 20 second load times, SSD is for you. But again, you know, ramen is high in sodium, even though it's cheap. So I think you should just go get HDD. This is my personal opinion. Because, yeah, I spent a lot of money on SSD drives, and they're great, but it's probably more better for those of you who don't have a lot of money to just get an HDD drive, you know what I mean? There's quite a few of them on sale and carry an endless amount of storage. And you don't end up having to contemplate eating ramen for the rest of your life. Speaking of which, I think I'll go get another one. Yay. Microsoft stops production of the Xbox One X and the Xbox One S Digital Edition. Man, that was a bad investment on my part. I still haven't done anything with that thing. This is Matthew Milam, and this is the Milam Report, sponsored by Real Ones Gaming.